So we talked about some good study habits that you could implement to be successful, but let's also talk about some skills that you should implement to be successful, not only in this course, but when you get out there into the career. So there's some things that can really set you on a path to success, which really is becoming more and more difficult nowadays with all of the distractions and the way we we, we go about life nowadays. So welcome back, Anita. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. And this is a topic I really have a lot of passion about because I always think of skills like your toolbox, right? You have certain tools and you'll utilize them at different times and your skills are a certain way. There's certain skills that are really going to be beneficial for you and others that you're like, eh, kind of probably don't need to utilize that. But take this and utilize it for your own betterment and learning. That's really what this is intended to do. So let's do this. So in today's age, we have actually have a real hard time with focus. Sitting down and focusing on something for any length of time has become very difficult for us. And I'm a product of this as well. There are things that I get distracted with and there I'm constantly needing new information feeding in. So if things are not exciting, then I'll pull out my phone and be checking my phone or, you know, I'll, I'll that constant stimulus, but this is shown to not, you, you don't do as well with this, especially when it comes to studying. And so stop multitasking, put all that stuff aside, learn to focus. Uh, it, focus is a skill and so you have to practice it. And with and in today's age, we're so out of practice with that. And so if you are getting, if you're trying to study material, you're gonna have to retrain your brain for that. Another thing that I'll also mention is flow. Flow is that, that experience that you have when you get so into something that you, um, time just flies by and you look up and you're like, how did two hours go by? And that's described as flow. And people who get into flow regularly tend to be happier. That's that multitasking again, right? Don't, don't multitask, but instead try to get to that experience, that flow. And if you can get into that flow when you're studying, it's going to be so much more powerful than, uh, than if you were just trying to once again, try to attack multiple things, and it's going to be a much more enjoyable experience. Totally. And for those of you that are, that are thinking, well, what is flow? Can you think of a time where you've been in flow, and what was the outcome? Like, how did you know you were in flow? Because I might be wondering if I'm sitting there watching this, well, how do I know if I'm in flow or not? Well, one thing I enjoy doing is putting together uh, this material. And when I start putting together this material uh, for these classes and putting it together, I, hours will go by and I won't even recognize it. So that's an example of me getting into flow and really enjoying the process. Love that. So you're so passionately involved in creating content and material that you are just like in this heightened state. And you look down and you're like, oh my gosh, two hours have already gone by. You're focused, you're in the moment that is a prime example of flow perfect yeah i love that so another thing that will happen is we will get into that flow state which is great but there are times also when we're just trying to check off the boxes where it's not sinking in we just want to get to the end of the video so that way we can say yeah we've done that video we want to just fill out whatever it is in the assignment just because we want to check that off the list and we get into the checking off the list. There's a time and a place for that, but it's probably not in the classroom. It's probably not in this educational uh, setting. Your end goal is to learn the material. So if you've gotten to the point where your eyes are glazing over, it's not sinking in, it's time to take a break or put it away and come back another day. And so uh, make sure that you're taking that mindset of, I'm not just going to go through the course material and check it off. I'm actually gonna let this soak in. There are also a lot of resources that are available to you, more now so than ever, and a lot of free resources out there. And so as you're going through my course and it's explained one way, that will give you kind of a view of it from one perspective, but there are other perspectives that are out there that might describe it a little different way that might resonate with you better or might give you a little different viewpoint from it. And so when you come across something that you're not familiar with or need more information about, go up there. You can look on online and there's different sites that give a ton of information out there. There's other videos that are out there. You can look at books. Uh, there's training materials. There's other students 
that you can reference and ask questions. And there's whole communities out there for whatever you're studying. There's just a wealth of information out there. There's a lot of free information out there. I will post things throughout the course uh, for, for some of these references. But, but when you come across something that you need a little extra help with, reach out to these resources and get some help. And one of the greatest ways to ensure that you've actually learned the material is to actually um, utilize a concept which we utilize where I work at, uh, which is called teach back. So are you able to actually teach the content to someone else? And if you find that you're struggling and you don't under quite understand, that's a great gut check for you to be like, you know, I actually don't understand this myself. So one of the greatest ways, and I'll restate that again, is can you actually take this material that you were taught and try to teach it to somebody else? Granted, tech might not be their field, but if you were able to reteach that content, there's pretty good chances that you have actually learned that material. In addition, we always traditionally in school, we have assessments, right? If we give you an assessment, but I really like the teach back method. That's a fantastic method. Excellent. So unfortunately, in the middle of courses and in the middle, sometimes our motivation lags. And so what happens, what are you going to do when your motivation lags? There's going to be those days where you don't feel like studying. Just have a, a plan in mind. But for you have to stick to your schedule. So you've established a schedule for reasons. Stick to it. Uh, there are going to be times you're going to have to power through things. There's times when you just have to suck, suck it up. Uh, but also learn to enjoy this experience. If you're not enjoying this experience, then it's going to make it much more difficult. So learn to really love uh, that. And I would also say if you're not enjoying the learning part of this, this could be the wrong career for you, to tell you the truth, because there is so much learning that happens with this. There are so much changes that happen within technology that if you don't enjoy learning new things, that this might not be the right career for you. So I'm hoping that you're going to, I'm hoping that you're excited about getting started into this, that you're motivated and you stay motivated, but you have to keep fueling that. And one way to do that is to continually envision the end goal keep in a vision of what that end goal is and driving towards that and then celebrating those wins along the way making sure that you are are having time to uh celebrate the fact that you are accomplishing some great amazing, awesome things. Yeah, excellent. And you know, one of the things I wanted to mention, and this is actually normal, is not every little thing will be inspiring uh, for you. Uh, there are going to be little bits of information that you're like, eh, it could be a little uh, mundane. But for the most part, it should be exciting, right? So give yourself that compassion and that grace. If you do encounter a little bump saying, oh, this might be a little boring, but over Overall, the consensus is that you're excited. One of the things I want to share about motivation, I really like this topic, is we are motivated for a variety of different reasons. And it really occurs across a continuum where you're doing something because someone told you to do so or you need to get a certain degree. Uh, so it could be extrinsically motivated. And then the highest level of motivation really is when it comes within intrinsic. So that being said, how do we make something intrinsic? Well, according to a psychological theory, and it's called the self-determination theory by Ryan and Desi, it was published uh, many years ago, but it talked a little bit about motivation, and they broke down motivation into three key concepts, and that was competence, autonomy, and relatedness. I like to use the uh, acronym of CAR. And so when you have those three things in place, when you actually feel competent with the material, you really learned it, you understand it, then you're going to be more intrinsically motivated. The second one is autonomy. When you feel like, I got this, I can do this on my own, uh, then you are going to also be more internally motivated. And then the last one is the relatedness. Do you relate to this field? Are you excited about it? If you cannot even see yourself in this field, then that is going to really dampen 
your intrinsic motivation. So I really like the car concept and taking that into consideration as you proceed on your journey here. So another thing that you'll hear within this industry a lot, and even outside of this industry, is something called continuous improvement, where you're constantly improving things. Well, of course, we're taking a a, a program, a training program, that's improvement right there. But I also mean take your study habits and the way you're approaching your study study habits from a continuous improvement as as well. Analyze that and see, are you continually getting better in the way you focus and the way you're studying and make changes along the way. So I make my teams that I manage do retrospectives. So what they'll do is they'll look back and say, okay, over this period of time, what did we do that we did really well? What did we do that we could improve upon? And what changes do we need to make? So one of the models that I will use often with my employees is the keep, start, stop. So what is it that you would like and I do this both way. I do it for my employees and they do it for me. What is it that we want to keep and, uh, and because it's working really well, what is it are things that we think that we should start doing to make it even better? And what it are things that we should stop doing because it's not serving us well? So the keep, start, stop, keep that in mind as you go through this course. Yes, excellent. And then, of course, you got to finish what you start. If you're starting out, are you one of those people that are uh, starting things, but they're not finishing it? And I tend to be really like things at the beginning and I get involved in and really in depth into a project. And then things kind of wane as I go through the project. But I have to keep going. And what I've noticed, I've done a lot of studying about success and what successful people do. And they have perseverance. They keep going after things and they have focus. They have a end destination. So they know where they want to go. So they've got that focus and they keep pushing towards it. It may not be fast, but they start, they keep, continue to push and drive towards that. So, uh, and I would challenge that as you go through this, the online format may not be the best for you. You may need something that's a little more directed and you may need to find maybe a community college or some other education course that will get you there uh, and, and, and have a little more direction towards it. But there's a lot of people that also thrive with this online format also. So it can be a great format for you. So just assess that and whatever the case may be is when you start out, keep focused, keep persevering. And if you struggle with that, uh, we actually have a course that we are creating uh, to help you instill great habits. And so uh, consider taking that course. I'll put the link down in the description of that. And um, you may, if you find that yourself that you start a lot of things, but you don't finish those things, then you may want to take that course and see if there are some certain things you could do differently to make sure that you can be more successful, not just with uh, something like a technology course, but just in all of your goals in your life. And so let's focus more around all your goals. So we're pretty excited about that. And um, so we'll be, I'll, once again, I'll pass that down into the description. Yeah, and one of the things about that is, once again, uh, give yourself that grace. It is human nature to do something like that, where you start something strong and it kind of slows down. But the thing about this is how do you build credibility with yourself? How do you actually earn your own respect and actually or act out of integrity in your own word? Because the more you do that, then the more confident you're gonna feel, the more confident you're gonna feel, the more competent you will feel. And it's this like competent, confident feedback loop. And that will help you in your journey to success. So thank you so much. Uh, I wish you all the best on your journey here and uh, reach out to us if you need anything.